Hey everyone, I'm Dan, and I like Monster Hunter. I've also had a ton of free time on my hands lately, and a strong desire to create. So I figured why not just combine the two and challenge myself to try something new. Now I'm not a sculptor. I've never really done this before in my life. But I happened to find some old clay in a drawer while I was cleaning a while back, and I thought to myself, this'll do. So join me, won't you, while I create the vicious, the terrifying, the voracious, the Lossodrome. Yep, that's right, starting small, just like any good hunter should. Any hunter worth their salt knows full well that going straight for a Rathalos at the beginning of the game pretty much is a death sentence. And since I'm basically using the real life equivalent of bone and iron weapons, I'm gonna start small. So I'm gonna start with my very own sensei, as Gaijin Hunter likes to call it. The monster that taught me the ropes. And I guess I kinda figured it could teach me a thing or two about sculpting as well. So it made sense. So without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, gotta roll all this old clay through a pasta maker. Easy. Eh. Seriously? Ugh. Who was the genius that came up with the idea to make the roller bigger than the machine itself? So anyway, I take it to the end of the table, and it works perfectly fine. So I get busy rolling out a bunch of clay. And boy do I mean it. Then I assemble everything I'm gonna need. The roller, the holder, clay, tools, and my mitts. Now this is some really old clay, I'm not even kidding when I tell you this. You see this? Yeah, it's pretty good stuff, generally, but uh, this clay, it's been around. You know, last time I had this clay in my hands, Independence Day was still in theaters. Yeah, I'm not kidding. So because of that, I have to test this stuff out. I take out a bunch of the old Sculpey 3 that I had. It seems pretty firm, alright, not bad good start, but I gotta test it even more. So I bake some of it, and do a durability test. Not bad, not bad. Seems pretty durable. I'm actually really surprised. Alright, test passed. So now I'm gonna take this big custom holder that I built up, take some armature wire and some clay, slap them together, and see what happens. But that comes later. Now I got my tools. Look at them, so clean, so nice, and yeah, that's not gonna last. All right, pen and paper time, time to get to sketching. Uh, I am not an artist at all, so forgive me if we speed right on through this. Don't worry, you're not missing much. Yeah, I ran out of paper there, sue me. All right, I'm gonna make myself a nice armature here. It's a fairly simple process. I just follow the lines I made until I have a simple skeleton. Now make some legs. And they attach pretty well. All right. Then I grab some foil from the kitchen. This stuff is great for bulking up statues. So I just put a whole bunch on. Just clump it right on there. Clamp it down. Get the basic shape you're after. And it works out. I pretty much put it around everything except for the exposed areas like, you know, feet or the head. And shockingly, it almost kind of stands on its own. Maybe not. So this is the general shape that I'm after. It's pretty recognizable, I would think. I mean, well, we'll get there. Now I'm going to put it on the holder, or the stand. I don't really know what you call this thing, so it's a holder for now, I guess. It stands upright pretty much on its own. It's lightweight. It looks a lot heavier than it actually is. Pretty good. Now we're going to take a whole bunch of that Sculpey 3. And it's gonna slap it right on there like some kind of loose skin. Now, I'm not really thinking about refining this necessarily, because I'm gonna build the rest of this at a Super Sculpey. See, Super Sculpey has a much easier time adhering, I guess, to, to rough surfaces, porous surfaces. So, this is pretty much how it's gonna stay. 
And with that, we're off to our very first bake. That was quick. Now we're all baked up, it's out of the oven, cooled down. Came out pretty nicely. I'm actually kind of shocked. It's very durable. I was actually told that Sculpey 3 is pretty brittle, and this surprised me. And off camera, I decided to... Uh, oh, I, I missed a couple spots there. Whoops. Not a big deal. Because off camera, I, I took some of that Super Sculpey, slapped it on there just to see if it would actually stick like I thought it would, and it did. Did a pretty good job. So now I'm just going to put a thin layer all over the entire thing. And just like that, we're left with a nice flesh raptor. I'm not sorry. It's pretty smooth to the touch, and it'll also ensure that future layers of Super Sculpey that I apply to it will have a much easier time sticking to itself when it's uncured. Speaking of which, it's time to start building up some detail. First thing I wanted to do is get that uh, back spiny area. I don't really know what you call it, but might not look like much at the moment. You'll understand what it is when it gets closer to being done. Just gonna roll out my stylus here until I get the general shape that I want. And don't forget, fingers are great tools too. It's coming out all right. Not bad, I'm gonna do the same thing for the neck. This part's pretty quick and simple. Really just wanna get things on there, like a good solid foundation. Then it's gonna blend the worms that I made into the rest of the body so it looks fairly seamless. I think I did a pretty okay job by the end. Now I'm gonna make the legs. Now, in the game, Velocidrome is kind of a skinny boy. There's not really much going on there. You know, he's like a Velociraptor, right? He's running really fast, jumping really high, attacking mostly with his legs or his toes, whatever. So I kind of wanted to bulk it up, mostly because I wanted to try out something with muscles because it, it's fun to sculpt muscles, apparently. And it was. And it looks pretty good, if I had to say so myself. You know, I kind of... I kind of bulked him up. This Velocidrome did not skip leg day. And I think for the for the most part, it came out really well. Now I'm starting to add like a calf muscle, I guess it would be. Like I really wanted to make this thing extreme. Like his legs are very, very strong. And that's why I wanted to get across with this sculpture. That kneecap that you're seeing right there, don't worry about that. That's That's very temporary. I'm going to end up going back and fixing that, but I don't have it on camera. Now to do the same thing with the other leg. Smooth that out real good, make sure it's the same size. Here's where I'm adding the actual, what will be the actual kneecap, I guess you could say. Uh, really not much else there, just um, yeah, just a really athletic flesh dino. And there you go. Not too shabby. Yeah, from the front, it actually looks really good so far. I'm actually shocked. I'm very happy with myself at the moment. Now I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to use this textured edge to sort of give it a bit of a scaly underside texture. This will help out later. This isn't going to come into play yet, but I want to see how it went. And uh, shockingly, I didn't. With all the handling I did, I didn't like smudge any of it off. Very, very surprised and very happy. Speaking of being very happy, I'm going to work on the scales now. If you couldn't sense the sarcasm there, oh boy, turn away now. These scales were a major pain, but you know, nothing worthwhile is easy, right? So this must have been the most difficult thing ever. At the end of the day though, it does look really nice. I'm kind of shocked with myself, my own abilities here. Uh, then I just went up and did the rest of the body. It took forever. Yeah, I even did the spine and yeah, you know, it, it's it's coming together around this point. I was kind of considering like smudging it all in and redoing it, but you know, around this point I started saying to myself, yeah, that's not bad. That's actually not bad. So I continued. And I continued. And after a long long time. It was finally done. Until I realized there was uh, another side. Great. Back to it. Let's speed on through this, shall we? And there we go. A fully scaled up Velocidrome 
thing. And with that, I think it's about time for its very first actual bake. Yeah, at this point, I really wouldn't want to undo anything that I've done by handling it, so it's probably for the best that I just do it. And it's done! Again, I'm very, very surprised. It's very durable too, it feels very nice. Again, I was told this stuff is very brittle when it comes out, but I don't know. I'm very, very impressed. This stuff is great. Next up, I'm gonna make the hands, or what you might consider to be hands. They're kind of more like flat waffle iron looking things with like fingernails sticking out of it. Regardless, that's what he's got. So I'm gonna take these twist ties and I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to make little tiny armature wires out of it. Just for a little added protection. Then I'm gonna use what's called Primo, which is uh, that brown stuff. It's very, very durable. Like you can even bend it after it's been completely cured. It's pretty cool. I should have gotten it on camera, but I didn't. I made 14 of these really tiny, annoying nails. Ugh. But like it says on the tin, they're very, very durable. They feel good. They're shockingly lightweight, again. And now I fit them into a ball of clay that I guess is considered this thing's hand. I, I don't know. At the moment, it doesn't look like much, but after a while, you know, you know what? That's not bad. That looks almost exact. That's kind of awesome. I can't believe I did that. That's really kind of cool. So give me a hand, huh? Or how about two? Yeah, I, I don't feel good about it either, I'm sorry. Anyway, he has hands now. But what good are hands without arms, right? So I'm gonna take my armature wire back out, cut some to a somewhat okay arm length. I'm just eyeballing it here, I'm not really measuring. Checking them out against the body, they look okay. I'm gonna roll out a piece of clay, cut it open, and I'm gonna put that around the wire. It's gonna basically form the skin of the arm. Then I'm just gonna smooth everything out together and uh, yeah, not bad. But it doesn't match the legs though, he's very scrawny. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a whole bunch of muscly detail. Really, really spice this thing up. And damn, that looks good. That is a nice arm. I am very, very surprised I was able to pull this off. Not just once, but twice. I am very, very proud of how these came out. They look really cool. I love the definition I was able to get out of these. It didn't take that long either, shockingly. Speaking of not taking very long, scaling them up, oh boy. That was an exercise of frustration, let me tell you. But it was worth it in the end, so. So now let's take stock of everything that I've done so far. I got the body done, got the arms done, but they're not cooked. Now before I got started on this project, I made a foot for some reason, or a toe. I'm really not sure why. I wanted to practice on something, so I did a toe. Maybe my inner Quentin Tarantino fan was coming out. I really have no idea why I did that. I didn't use it anyway, so whatever. The other thing that I made, however, I will end up using, and that's this lower jaw. I don't know why I went with that either, why the lower jaw of all things. It was nice and complex, and it was fairly simple to just put together. You know, when you're just playing around to test out the, the integrity of the medium. So I went with it, and then I didn't stop, and yeah. This was the first thing I really did on this model, and wow, I I guess I just felt like I could do it all of a sudden. Like, wow. Looking back on it, I did this just from a picture. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. I'm so humble. I instantly connected with that because I'm probably the most humble person that I know. But the head comes later. I just want to show this off now. First off, I'm going to make the feet. I'm going to do it pretty much the same way I did with the body. It's going to take some foil, but I'm going to take this stuff called Bacon Bond 2 or whatever it's called. I don't know. The shot's kind of blurry, sorry. Basically, it's a type of glue that hardens when you bake it. It's really helpful for something like this. Time to make some dino booties. I'll slap some toes on there, 
attach more primo claws, and eventually we have a Velocifoot. Not bad, but how does it fit? Oh, just like Cinderella, it fits perfectly. Apply the bacon bond, get it all up in there, seal up the hole, blend it, and it looks pretty seamless. I'm very happy with that as well. Then I put on the little hook toe, I'm not really sure what you call that. Don't know why I didn't film it, I texture it up real good. Then I make the other foot, pretty much the same way. Attach it, texture it, smooth it up, looking good yet again. Who knew I was good at this? Not me. So, I'm gonna finish up this guy right here. Uh-huh. Not too shabby if you ask me. I gotta say, I liked how the legs were coming out before. Now that they got their feet attached, they really, really came together. They, this thing is starting to come out so much better than I expected. So with that done, I baked it one more time. It stands on its own. Well, not on its own, you know what I mean. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over. It's pretty solid altogether. Now I'm gonna get that lower jaw back out here and work on finishing this head. This is the image I'm working off of and, you know, it's a pretty good reference, I think. So now, we're just gonna roll up a ball of clay, flatten it out, smooth it up, carve out the roof of the mouth and the tip. You know, I'm pretty much just gonna work it as much as I can until it resembles something close to... Well... Alec Baldwin in Beetlejuice comes to mind. I'm gonna roll up some balls for the eyes, smush them in there. Oh yeah, that's Alec, all right. Now I'm just gonna put some more clay for the eyelids, and then I'm gonna smush them into the rest of the face. This should make a fairly smooth transition between the two and make it seem very, well, seamless, which is the idea after all. Seems to match up okay. All right, now I'm gonna work on the beak. In the game, the beak is like a flat texture. It just goes from blue to yellow, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to make it seem more like, like an actual bird beak. So I rolled up this little strip of clay here and I'm gonna smooth it up towards the front so it looks like it's a continuous beak that actually protrudes from the face. And I was really happy with that result as well. Then I'm gonna add some nostrils. Pretty self-explanatory and simple, nothing really crazy. And now to see how it looks again. It's really starting to come together. Looks good when it's closed. How about when it's open, which is my preferred look? Not bad. Not bad at all. So now I'm gonna take some leftover armature wire and poke it right back into the lower jaw and connect the top and bottom together and get into a position that I'm kind of happy with. And now to fill in that ugly void, I'm gonna jam some more clay back in there Carve it up, smooth it out, and make it look more like a throat. It was a pretty interesting effect, actually. Looks really cool when you look directly into it. But it's missing something. Teeth! So I'm gonna do what I did in the bottom row and just take these toothpicks, cut them up, and put them on the top. Bam. Not bad. That's a face only a mother could love. But how does it look when it's attached to the body? Pretty good, as it turns out. That looks really awesome. I was worried about this, actually. I was worried about the weight, but it wasn't a big deal in the end. Now off camera, I scaled up the head. I did this off camera because I had to get really, really close to get those finer, tinier scales. And it was just impossible to fit that in camera and I didn't feel like trying, so yeah, whatever. It worked out. Now I'm going to poke more armature wire into the top of the head to make way for the crest that I'm going to put on later. This will definitely come in handy, but not for right now. Apply some bacon bond to the neck and the head and stick them together. There you go. Not too shabby. Now I'm going to put some more bacon bond, cover up the gap, and bam. I also made that little turkey neck thing, too. I don't know why I didn't capture that on camera. Then I made a crest out of Primo. I wasn't really too happy with how this was coming out. This stuff is really rigid and hard to work with, especially when it's this old. So I decided to use it as something like a stencil, and I cut out the crest out of two layers of Super Sculpey, bulked it out, put on some Bacon Bond, and applied it to the head. And all of a sudden, it's starting to look a hell of a lot like a Velocidrome, go figure. 
Time for another bake. Be right back. Now that it's cooled down, I need to apply the hands, or the arms, whatever. But first things first, I gotta do some drilling. Now Super Sculpey has surprised me with how durable it is. I've been told that I can drill a hole through it, and yeah, they were right. This was surprisingly simple and didn't cause any sort of breakages or any issues whatsoever. I'm very, very surprised. All in all, I'm very happy with this product. Now I'm gonna try the arms on for size. It's a pretty snug and easy fit. They don't really seem to wobble around as much as I thought they would. I thought they'd be weighed down more by the, the edge of the clay. No, it's pretty good. It wasn't that difficult to get them in position either. But that doesn't mean I wasn't going to take precautions, so I took some of that bacon bond back out, removed the arms, applied the bacon bond, and then I reattached the arms where I wanted them to be, and I prepared it for its next bake. Yeah, I took some extra precautions here. Now, I really didn't want to risk them drooping while it got hot in the oven, so I took some extra precautions with the help of some leftover souffle dishes from the kitchen. And a half hour later, it looks pretty good, but it's not quite done yet. Now I'm going to fill in the gaps where those shoulders are. Nothing really crazy to talk about here. Just roll in some clay, scale them up. Then it goes in the oven for one more bake. And it is done. My first ever sculpture completed. That is looking really, really cool. I'm very proud of myself, you can't tell. But it's not quite done yet, because now it's time to paint. Now, I want to get this out of the way right off the bat. You don't have to use an airbrush for this step, but I have one, and I want to use it, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna use the airbrush to apply a nice thin white coat for my base layer. I'm not going to use it for detailing or anything. I'm nowhere near that level. I think it's about time we got to the colors. Starting off with a very dark blue. You'll understand later why I went this dark. Don't let this fool you. For the underside, I'm using this unbleached titanium. I'm not really sure what that is, but it's a really good base coat where I'm eventually going to make the underside look like. Then I'm going to apply a nice pinkish red to the inside of the mouth and the tongue and the connective tissue. And the beak gets a really nice bright yellow, looking pretty on point there. And then I'm going to paint the crest gray. Why gray? Because the crest is orange and gray makes a really good base coat for orange. It makes it, it makes it just pop. At least that's what they say online and they were right. But my orange went on really streaky. I wasn't quite happy with that, but since it's a, like an extruding bone from the top of this thing's head, it works. And after a nice peel and some cleanup, it's looking pretty snazzy. Then I paint the eyes. Yeah, I did that off camera. It was a lot more difficult than it looks. I had to redo that a lot. That's why it looks a little bit, a uh, little funky. But, you know, it is what it is. Now I'm just going to apply a nice glossy black on the hands and on the feet. And with that, the full body base coat is complete. Alright, time to get detailing. First up was the crest. I did this off camera because I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. I basically just dry brushed some orange and yellow and red until I was happy with it. And for the body, I found this really nice light blue from Folk Art called Calypso Sky that I could have as a nice top coat with that dark blue undercoat. And I think the combination of the two would go really well and be very close to how it looks in the game. Overall, I'm very happy with the result of this. I will say though that the camera definitely doesn't do it justice in hand. It looks a lot closer to how it does in the actual game. It looks very blown out here on camera and I don't know why that is. Just take my word for it, it looks a hell of a lot better. But if you ask me, this is nothing to sneeze at.
Now I apply a quick wash to the beak. Looks nice and dirty the way it should. And then for the eyes, I just blot down some yellow and some orange. And it came out pretty decent. Not bad, especially from this kind of angle. It's really starting to look like it's right out of the game now. Then to finish them off, I put a nice little slice of black and a little dot of white there for the glare. And it looks to me like we got a Velocidrome, boys and girls. Look at that. Isn't that menacing? Then I apply a black wash to the mouth and the underside. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out as well. For the stripes, I just let the scales do all the work. I let them guide me. I wasn't really going for anything in particular. Just wherever I ended up putting the scales, I followed them directly. Which is probably the way to go when you think about it in nature. And there you go. Fully detailed. Fully done. This is at a place that I couldn't be happier. Just let this soak in for a little bit. Oh, but one more thing. Now I gotta go back to the claws and give them a little extra detail too. Just dry brush some red and orange and yeah. All that's left to do now is apply some white to the teeth, and now it's done. To quote Barry Burton, famed Capcom employee, Take a look at this! I really don't want it to seem like I'm patting myself on the back too much here, but I couldn't be happier with how this came out. The end result here is far beyond what I thought I was capable of. And this was a ton of fun. But we're not quite done yet. Almost, but not quite. I just gotta make a stand for this guy. Just gonna draw out some holes, drill him, fit him on. Seems pretty secure to me. Not too bad. Stuck onto it pretty well, stands on his own. Mostly. It's a pretty secure fit. It's not so bad. Now I'm gonna paint up the base all black and then some gold around the trim because black is a really, really great base for a metallic paint. Now I'm gonna super glue him on there. Then I'm gonna add some Mod Podge to the base. This is for some added security for the paint and also it'll make it a lot easier to clean later on. And it is is done fully complete oh my god this looks so so cool i don't really have much else to say here we're just gonna watch these glamour shots and uh take us out
And with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'd like to give a big shout out to YouTube channels Ace of Clay and North of the Border for providing the inspiration for me to start this project. If you liked what you saw, leave some comments, tell me what you thought, and don't forget to like that smash button. I'm going to call that a quest complete. I'll catch you all later, and until next time, happy hunting. Or sculpting, I guess, in this case.